Yo, what's good, man? This is MBS Central, man. I am Keo and special guest tonight, man. We, I got a special guest, man. He he was the winner of the one man army gauntlet at Midnight Madness uh, this past weekend. Eunice, man, what's going on? What's good, man? Uh, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm Interesting week for you, huh? That's a fact. That's a fact. This, this weekend was amazing, yo. Like, the experience alone was just... That's one of the best experiences I've ever had, you know, in battle right. So, uh, so, so we're going to get um, into that. But uh, first off, man, when it comes to battle rapping, man, how um, how did you get, got started into the world of battle rapping? I want to say... Around, like, when I was in middle school, in the eighth grade, I saw people, like, you know, they were doing freestyles, and they were competing with each other, like, you know, and that joint always interests me, but then, like, a, f a few years later, I kind of forgot about it, and then I got back to it, like, my, I'd say my 11th grade year, and in high school, and I was watching people, like, like, conceited, and... Like, probably one of the best battles, like, one of my favorite battles back then was watching Conceited versus Tall T. Oh, and wow. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was like, a, I was a big fan of Conceited back in, uh, you know, back then. And so I met, like, more people like, 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 Tay Rock and, and New Jersey Twerk and, and different people like, and Briz from Nitty and all those people just, like, so it just, it just made me, like, like battle rap more and more and more as I kept watching it. And then it got to a point where on Instagram, uh, Hollow to Don was doing a, well, it was like a little online battle league on Instagram. And okay. it was called IG Battle League. And I started doing it for fun. And then, you know, I got on Twitter and then the rest is history. Uh, yeah. Is is there a battle that, that I know you mentioned the Conceited and Tall T. Well, is there, <laughs> was there a battle that made you say, man, I, I'm going to start battle rapping from now on. I don't know, because... I, I, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's a good question. I'd probably say... Damn, that's a good question. I don't... I can't... I couldn't give you a specific battle, because, like... Uh, but it was, like, highlights that I was watching mainly. Like, uh, it was, like... Like, when I was younger, I didn't really watch, like, full battles until... Uh, you know, I got, I, I really like love battle rap, so I would just watch highlights. So I would say it was back to back, back to back highlights, like people with Daylight and Tay Rock giving their, their room shakers. I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta try this out. So, so yeah. Um, okay. So, um, you got this slogan, man, that's infamous slogan that you always say, man, out mm -hmm. the gate, man. Where did that come from? Uh, Funny, funny thing. It's not like <laughs> uh, on on Instagram. I just like when I was doing it on Instagram, I just started doing it. Um, just saying, like out the gate, you know, like because the way my style was back then, I used to like. Well, it still is. I used to just have a bar immediately, um, like right after I say it, and it just stuck with it because everybody was liking it so much. And they was like, why you got to move your hands like that? And then people were messing with it still. So I was just like, I'll make it a thing now. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Now, um, I've been wanting to ask you this. Um, what's up with the red hat, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was like, <laughs> I, I, like, I just really... Like, when I first got the hat from my bro, Daniel, uh, he has his own business called Lone Wolf Vision. Um, when I when I got the hat, like, I just really messed with it. And then when I wore it to my first face, to my second face-to-face -face battle, um, people was like, yo, is it the, is it the hat? Like, what, what's good with you? Because <laughs> the second, the first face-to-face -face I had, I wore a red hat. But it wasn't the same hat. It was a different one. And then the second one, I wore a different red hat. So it was like, yo, you might have to make that red hat your thing. 
And I was yeah. like, I'll try. It. And then, because then there was another battle where um, I lost with the, with a blue hat on. So wow. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, let me go back to the red hat. <laughs> and then I just kept winning from there on. So I was like, I might as well make it a little, you know, saying a little thing. So, yeah. So, so, so you're going to continue wearing that red hat then? I'm a, I'm gonna mix it up sometimes. Like, not, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not gonna always like you know because I'm not gonna always you know I don't gonna oversaturate the hat. So I'm uh some days I'm gonna wear it. Some days mo- most of the times where it, where you see me like serious, I'm gonna wear the hat. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. okay. So so I you know I first heard about you in, in the spaces um in in the spaces battles with Ian EFM shout out to them um but um. When it comes to spaces, battles on the spaces and live battles, what's what's the difference between that when it comes to that? Because you've done both of those. So I'd say the biggest difference is like people seeing you, like what like people can hear you in the spaces, but it's only it's only like what twelve speakers allowed on the Twitter spaces? Yeah, and and in face to face, it's like everybody in the building is is looking at you like like what do you like? They're watching every single one of your motions. They're listening to everything you say. So that whole that's the that's the like the the most distinct part about it um, between the Twitter spaces and the face to faces because it's just like more more engaging when it comes to face to faces. So and, yeah. And do you have the same preparation with when it comes to live battles and space battles? Uh, I, I take like the I take it all seriously, but as far as preparation, I would say the preparation for Twitter Space is easier because I could just I could just read it for real for real. Like I don't I don't stress myself out with I don't have to stress myself out memorizing it. So so yeah, I'd say the preparation is just a little different on that end. But yeah. What, what, was there a was there a space battle where um it just made a huge impact and you started getting these looks from battling live what was was there one particular battle for that probably my my first probably had the the most well one of the more i can't damn I, I can give you two battles that like had like the biggest impact. It was the the first one I had where it was a three rounder and it was people like Bill Collector and Elijah Straight watching and they were all like, yo, who is this guy? Like he's crazy. <laughs> and, then, and then there was another one where I battled um Appa. Shout out to Appa. Um when I battled him, like people like Surf and Geechee and you know uh Tay Rock were watching and they were like like when when like it was like them saying my name alone was like what like got more people to like watch me. So oh, I say it's those two okay. battles. Okay, and and um oh, with going to that bill collector battle, when you found out you were battling bill collector, what what was going through your mind? Like almost <laughs> like were were you starstruck or were you like, okay, I I I gotta kill this guy or else he's gonna kill me? At the t- all right, so the first thought I was like, yo, like Bill Collector wants to battle me. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, for real? I was like, all right, bet. And then they gave me a week to prep for that. And later on in the days, I was I was stupid for thinking this. Cause like a lot of the people that I was around was saying like you about to smoke Bill Collector. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm about to smoke. It got in my head. I'm about to smoke Bill Collector. Stop playing. And then when I when I got like like while I was rapping it and nobody was reacting, I was like, damn. I'm about to get smoked by Bill Collector. So so yeah, that was my my thought process throughout the whole Bill Collector battle. Oh wow. Okay, okay. I definitely need a rematch though. I need a rematch. Respectful. Wow. Oh, okay. I would like to see that. You might get it. You might get it now. <laughs> I, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> um, so EFM, man. Um, EFM has been, you know, it's a huge part of the culture. Um, from what I've seen. Um, 
how, how it came about when you first started joining the EFM family? I was mainly uh, watching, like, like, oh, sorry, listening to their spaces whenever they would have, like, smaller people like Elijah Strait and Swervo uh, and sometimes J2, like, mainly, like, the UM4 class would join in the spaces and talk to, to people like Greedy Gotti and Bum Nitty and, and Tati and Maven. And I would join in, but, like, they would never allow me as a speaker back then because I was, like, I was kind of like a, like a nobody, really. Nobody really knew me. So, <laughs> And when I did a little freestyle battle with with the person I battled first on the spaces, with Don the Prodigy, I did a freestyle battle with him. And then the battle rap doc hit me up and was like, yo, you want to you wanna battle in like three days prep? And I was like, on the spaces? I was like, all right, bet. And then from that point on, that's when like uh, EFM became like a family for me. So, yeah. So 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 who in E cuz I want to make sure I get the story straight who mm -hmm. in EFM was the one that discovered you The battle rap doctor uh aka doc no shot Okay shout out to doc bro, for real. Yeah And he Man. and he and that's current he's currently your manager right now Yep Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, okay man he's been doing a really great job shout out to doc man Oh um so so you joining EFM did you did, did you think it was going to be the you you did you think you were going to be at the position you were at now or you didn't know what to expect It was at, at times I was like I'm going to just do this for fun cuz I was just like it's whatever for real, for real. but then the more I got into it the more I saw like people like you know, Bill Collector and Eliza Street being like, yo, you're fired. I'm like, them alone, them two alone saying that was like, damn, because those are two, two of my favorite battlers. Like, so I'm like, for them to say that to me alone was like, damn, I, I'm, I might actually have like a, a shot at being like better at this. So that it was, it was always a shocker to me though. Like it was never like, I was never expecting for me to get to the position that I'm at right now. Like me being where I'm at now was still shocking to me. So, so yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So the narrative that goes around right now is space battlers, man. Um, um, has that changed at all? Um, or what's the narrative behind as a space, when it comes to space battlers? Uh, the narrative is like, um, like some of the space battlers, they, they're, they're cool on the spaces, but they gotta, they gotta come outside to the real world, you know, and battle face to face and really get their feet wet and all that. Cause they still haven't done that. But what people don't understand is like, for me, at least I had two face to faces before I did, I joined the Twitter spaces. Oh, like, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I had a one rounder and I had a three rounder, um, and people like still was saying like, "Yo, you got to get your feet wet, yada yada yada," and I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna just ignore them for real because they obviously haven't watched all my battles." So I was just like, "It is what it is," but um, with more people like coming outside, like me, Appa, Dice, uh, Antihero, Moon, uh, Rain Rainfire Moon, um, and Rock Lee and kai and it's a bunch of people it's a bunch of us it's a whole movement we really showing like you know we're here and we're here to stay so that's that's that whole narrative so yeah so you do you feel like the narrative has changed though like the names you just mentioned and for what you did fact. at oma for a fact for a fact because me and appa literally just went off and we're the quote-unquote space battlers like the main two that people were talking about like Rock Lee just debuted on I Battle and caught a body. Antihero and Appa battled on KOTD the week before. Uh huh. Kai just caught a thirty like yesterday or two days ago on I Battle. It's it's all of Dice just had his uh, debut on Gates of the Garden. It's it's a bunch of us, you know, and we're we're gonna keep elevating and we're gonna keep proving people wrong because that's what we've been, that's what we just been doing for the the whole time so yeah definitely man i i, I love the progression the development and uh you know 
Oh, these guys are from EFM, Doc and Greedy and them boys, they're they're making these dreams come true, man. So um shout out to them and you guys for you know completing the assignment, man, every single right. time you get the opportunity. So we're gonna get to where what people want to know, man. The one man army gauntlet, man. What made you wanted to join the the, the that gauntlet, man? Because five you gotta you i think it's five rounds and mm -hmm. all in one night man and it was a tough challenge what, what what made you wanted to do that at first i was like when i heard about it, i was like oh so this is kind of like the crucible because it was like a bunch of general rounds and then when they said it was five rounds and all in the same night i was like nah count me out i'm not gonna do this <laughs> <laughs> i was like nah <laughs> And then when, like, I got, uh, like, people were like, yo, you you be able to do this. It's just a mental thing for real, for real. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll do it, you know what I'm saying? And plus, it'll, like, if if I were to, like, do, like, show out, it would be great for not only me, but for, like, EFM, too. So I was like, all right, bet, I'll, I'll do it. So that was that was my my mind state. Going and, how, and how soon were your rounds, um, like, um... Uh, completed when um, Com it was like all right. So the week before, last week I had my rounds finished because I, it was at times where I was hearing it was two minutes or it was two thirty. So when I heard it was two thirty, I started adding material and I wasn't finished until like last Tuesday. And then when I heard it was two minutes, I was like, damn, I gotta cut some of this out or they're gonna cut me off. And then I was like, you know what, forget it. So the lat I'd say when I was officially finished would be Thursday. For real. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and yeah. Midnight Madness, man. I know you've been in um you done the uh, you, um I battle. What when mm -hmm. what's the difference when it comes to on the midnight madness stage compared to other stages you've been on? Um with Midnight Madness, like it's it's a lot more like attention for real. Like everybody in the building is listening and watching you. Like all it's all eyes on the battlers. And it's like they're surrounding you. It's like a circle. It's not like everybody's in front of you. It's like a circle. So it's like it was like, damn, like everybody's looking for you at all type of angles. And they they like people will walk off and do something else if you're not good. That's that was the main difference. Like other crowds would be like nice and like stay there and stuff like that, but there it was a lot more engaging. Like people would like, and everybody showed love, but at the same time they would like you know, you know, not care if you were just up there rapping any anything like or not being good. So that that joint was like professional and it was fun at the same time. So yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <clears throat> so so how how does it feel when you know the the rest of their competitors. You know, have you as one of the favorites to win the gauntlet going into it? Like, how does it feel for you? I never, I me personally, I never understand it because it just like um, people say that's a good thing, but for me, I'm like, damn, because people don't like like write for me. Like, if they have to yeah. battle me, they're gonna designate one round or some or some material for me. And that's usually their best material for for whatever reason. So I'm like, damn, people gonna try to like really try to clip me <laughs> that, <laughs> that night. So Did you? It was more. It was more. It was fun, but it was like like stressful at the same time. No, so, knowing yeah. knowing that you were one of the favorites did you feel did you feel more pressure on you going yes, into for the gauntlet? In fact, I. <laughs> if like there's a bunch of people I was sparring with, well, not a bunch, but like. All the people I was sparring with were like, yo, you got to calm down. Like, you're going to be fine. And in my head, I'm like, every bar needs to hit or else I'm going to die out there. Like, that was my mind state. Like, I never want to go out and, you know, have a bad showing. That's But that's just me. And people were like, yo, you got to calm down. Like, that material's fire, yada, yada, yada. And I'm over here overthinking everything. So it was a lot of stress. So, yeah. So, so. Your first round against uh uh your opponent Alex, 
um, his round was directly just tailored to you. What what was going through your mind when 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 he was uh, spinning his round? Like what what was through going through your mind? In my head, I'm like, he really rolled for me. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm here in material. I'm like, yo, you serious? And in my head, I'm like, yo, it, it, it's fine. Like, because some of the material was, it was, I, you know, some of it was fire, but I was like, I feel like I was a little more consistent. But um, when they said I lost, I was like, damn. And the only reason they had me losing was because the I had a freestyle. There's a, there a split second where I forgot to transition to one of my lines. And I like almost choked. And they noticed me stutter. And I was, I just had to freestyle something and the freestyle like got me reaction so i didn't feel like it really cost me too much but the judges like felt that that's what cost me so so it is yeah. what it is i wasn't like mad over <laughs> anything so yeah but it show it showcased your talent because you know he barely beat you and um and he basically had a round tailored just for you so you know it's mm -hmm. and it shows that you know he he barely beat you so, so going into that tournament, you end up losing it. And were you were after you knew that you lost? Mm -hmm. Were you were you about to go home, or were you just gonna chill? I was gonna like leave a little early because I, I didn't want to like. I, I was I was cool with like staying the whole event, but in my mind, I was like, you know, I could do other things. So you know, yeah. I was on the fence about should I leave or stay. So. So, and, yeah. and, and what was going through your mind when you knew that you had another shot to get it back in the tournament? What was going through your mind after that? The first exact thing I thought was, if I lose again, you got to quit, respectfully. Like, you got to, like, take a moment, like, months out from battle rap. If you lose twice, if you lose twice in a gauntlet that you're not supposed to lose twice in, that's going to look insane on me so i was yeah. like yeah i gotta come back and wow out. <laughs> so yeah was there was there any part of the when you came back and you kept advancing where you was like oh man i i, I think i'm gonna win this i think i'm gonna win this did, did did you was any of that going through your mind or you was like all right i gotta take it one round at a time um the third and fourth were like arguably my the second third the second and fourth were my two best rounds. So I felt like a lot of I felt like the second round I felt like yeah I'm gonna win this room clearly because um that's just my best round and I don't feel like anybody's gonna beat that respectfully. And then the third round I was like I might lose. So it was definitely one round at a time for me. So yeah. So when you find when you realize that you won it, what well, what was the first thing that was going through your mind when you won it? Did it feel did it feel was it like did it felt real that you 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 won this thing nope, or not at all? I was like, for real, like like I really won. Like in my head, like <laughs> you can watch the video like while they're announcing me winning. I'm like, damn, I just won. And the day after, that's when it, like, really hit me. Like, you just won a gauntlet that you lost. Like, I was like, damn, that's fire. <laughs> and but at the moment, I was just like, all right, cool. That's what's up. Well, yeah. You, you, a lot of people were rooting for you, man. I was rooting for you. Um, Appreciate you know, the, EF, the EFM family, they were rooting for you. They were definitely happy and excited about this. Um, um, ha has has a lot of things changed for you since you won this gauntlet? Um, like the way the culture has been treating you compared to before you won it? I definitely say like, like it's been a lot, a lot more love, you know, people saying congratulations and, you know, like respectfully, I smoke you and all that. So <laughs> it, it's been, the, it's been a little bit of the same thing, but just more often now. So that's something I'm definitely getting used to. So uh, yeah, and and you've been and you've been really you know you've been really calm, cool, and collective. You know, I seen drugs said something on the spaces and yeah. uh, um, 
uh, Spills Hustles manager, and you've been really calm and cool about it. You was like, okay, I- I'll let you say what you got to say. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, like, you know, when when the when it's the day of the battle, you know, they can't do none of that talking at all. Like, it's just me yeah. versus a hustle or, you know, so I, I can't really, like, I, I don't regularly get too amped up unless I get, like, pissed off and that hardly happens because I don't really get affected by too much of what people say on Twitter. So, uh, so yeah, I just, you know, I, I managed to keep myself level-headed. So, so yeah. Now, now, um, you don't have to answer this, but I'm, I, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to ask you this anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do cover the mid, I'm, I, I am part of the Midnight Madness media team. There are a couple teams that are interested in you, man. Um, are you are are you gonna stay a free agent or are you are you gonna jump to a team? <laughs> I, I honestly, I me first, I didn't know about it, so um, I'm. It's still in this as of right now. I'm probably gonna stay a free agent. Until like I find a team that really like makes sense for me, yeah. Um, so so yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna stay a free agent for now. So, okay, yeah. okay. I mean, I mean, because if you do join a team, mm-hmm. I, I I just don't think it does make sense to get a title shot against Hustle. Um, that's the way I look at. I mean, because the one man army is basically free agent. Yeah, um, it is. Now, now, has has there been any talks about you and Hustle, the, the matchup with you and Hustle p- potentially happening now? Now that you have earned a, a, a title shot for that, uh, yeah, I've heard some people, you know, say um, they had me smoking Hustle, and I was like, damn, because at the time, wow, I had, I had, <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched any of Hustle's battles, so. I, I mean, I have now, but like at the time, I didn't, I didn't watch any of his battles. So I was like, "Damn, is he like trash?" Because apparently, what I heard was he thirty just because for the belt. Uh-huh. So I was like, "So like, yeah, that was my mind, like my mind, what I heard at least with me versus Hustle." So yeah. And um, and I, it, how how tough of a challenge is this going to be compared to the past opponents you had? I'd say this is my most important battle. Um and this this definitely is gonna be my toughest match because I'm not only battling hustle here. I'm battling like I'm still battling some people with the narrative that space battlers are outside. Yeah. Uh, I'm I, I still got something to prove with my skill. I gotta show that I can be consistent and so it's just it's it's just more to me it's more than hustle here. I gotta really like prove that um I'm I'm here. So so yeah. Um this the whenever this happens, it, it it's gonna be a huge battle. It's it's gonna be a high volume battle. You're gonna have battle rappers everywhere when mm-hmm. this happens on Midnight Madness, man. So um I do think it's gonna be a t- I don't I for to me. I don't think it's going to be your toughest opponent, but I do think it's going to be your toughest challenge to date. Um, I um, agree. I agree. So, I so, agree. so with everything going on right now, um, have you been getting calls from other leagues since this, um, since you won the tournament? Uh, I've had people like hit me up and hit up my uh, doc about, you know, they want me on this league. They want me on that league. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I, but as of right now, I'm more like I'm I'm taking a little just a little bit of a break. Um, okay, okay. Just just a little bit, not not too long, because I don't wanna... <laughs> yeah. um, and and are you planning to go back to the the spaces battles? If if it makes sense, I will. But I'm not. I won't probably be battling on the spaces as consistently as I. Uh, as I yeah, probably like I'm, with bigger, bigger names or more of the like upcoming space battlers that like. Because as of right now, I have like the online 
champion belt for the spaces. So yeah. Whoever, you know, gets to that level, I'm going to come outside for that. So, yeah. Is there anybody that you would be open to put that title up against? <laughs> There's one per there's one person that 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 wants some smoke with you and he's came on the show so um and he goes by the name he goes by the name of JR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't I, <laughs> Yeah, I figured. Um I feel like I feel like that's better in my opinion face to face wise. Um, okay, but that's just me. I feel like that would be a better battle face to face. So, uh, so but I'm I'm not you know turning it down in the spaces. So as far as putting the EFM spaces title on the line, there's no opponent that you think is that that is worthy of a shot right now. No. no. Okay. All right, uh, man. Would, as of right now, no. Okay, man. Um, okay, one, um, one last question, and we're going to play a quick little game to wrap up the show. All right. So um, I ask every single battle rapper this that comes on, man. Battle rap. Mount Rushmore. Who's on? I'm going to put DNA. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put Lux. I'm gonna put. I gotta. I gotta put. I gotta put Verb. I gotta put Verb. Okay. And I feel like I have to. Damn. Ah, who would be this last one? Damn. I. I'd say probably probably Tay Rock. Probably okay. Tay Rock. Oh, D and yeah. V. Okay. <laughs> All right. So 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 uh, before we wrap this up, it's a one word answer. I'm gonna say a couple of words, and then you tell me what's the first thing that pops up in your mind when when I say this. Okay. All right. Um, battle rap. Tay Rock. <laughs> they rocked. Yeah, wow. That, that's um, the e first person, yeah. EFM. Doc. Greedy Gotti. Bum Nitty. <laughs> the Battle Rap Doctor. Um, this dumb gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, Eunice. Battle Rap. Go in the making. Out the gate. I pull up, stop the whip. <laughs> All right, man. There you go, man. Yo, uh, definitely shout out to you, man. Before we go, uh, give your shout outs really quick before we wrap things up. Shout out to Merlin, PG County, uh, OSBL, six class. Shout out to EFM. Shout out my boy Doc. Shout out my enthusiasts. Y'all know who y'all are. And um yeah. And shout man. out to this podcast, respectfully. <laughs> All right, man. Um uh, shout out to you, Eunice. Uh best of luck to you, man. Um hope uh best of luck uh, whenever you get the title shot and things that's coming up for you. And once again, congratulations, man. With that being said, man, this has been MBS Central. I'm Keo, that's Eunice, and we are officially out. <laughs>